What should have been a magnificent age, a sun age, is now bloodied by their return. While some see the dragons as a glorious sign, others see them as an omen of evil. Nevertheless, their mere presence marks this age with violence and upheaval, a period of death and rebirth. No one knows what exactly is to come, but every age has its wars, its tragedies and its victories. This will be no different. Welcome to the Dragon Age. This is Thedas, a land continuously ripped apart by the races and religions that have permeated throughout its history. At its beginning, its enlightened citizens were deeply rooted in magic. The ancient kingdom of the immortal elves, Elvenan, ran across the mass of Thedas, practicing arts and holding knowledge that modern day scholars could barely fathom possible. But as the humans pushed in from the north and moved into the continent, so came the quickening, an event that removed the elves' immortality. And as war and tyranny imposed upon the rule of the elves, culture and knowledge was lost. In the modern age, their people are scattered and left dissolute. The Dalish elves roamed the lands, grasping at what little knowledge was left from the old empire. The truly lost, forced to live in alienages, the slums of cities, or worse, as slaves. The Dogians treat the elves as second-class citizens. The once immortal beings, a proud people, are now subject to the whims of humans, who have spread dominance in both culture and numbers. Humans and elves are not the only performers on the stage of Thedas. To outsiders, this fanatical race is nothing but monstrous warmongers. To those within their lands, one word, order. These people are called Kanari, the great horned civilization that lives in Parvolan. After numerous bloody encounters, Thedosians are only intimately familiar with the Kanari as a military body. The common image of the Canari borders on zealotry. They seek to make life's purpose through order. That purpose is reason enough for the Canari to campaign against the races that already call Thedas their home. As humans conquered the surface world and the Canari bloodied them in turn, a race of artisans, builders and merchants toiled underground within the deep roads, shaping stone and steel into works of architecture. The Dwarves stretched their home far and wide, adhering to a strict four-tiered hierarchy that pontificated life in the name of honor or coin. These nobles, warriors, smiths and outcasts built a culture so fascinatingly self-sufficient, one cannot help but be fascinated by them. The Dwarves are crafty in their resilience and influence, but many of their proud cities in the Deep Roads have fallen to matters dark. For deeper underground, darkness stirs, an enemy to all things living regardless of race or origin. That enemy, the aberrations of flesh, are called Darkspawn. And with the Darkspawn comes the Blight. The Chantry teaches us that the first Blight was caused by man, by mages who dared enter the Golden City, the house of the one god called the Maker. In their greed, the Magisters tried to capture the Golden City, but instead were cast out, changed and corrupted, carrying the taint, a festering sickness of the blood that manipulates the body to decay, they became the first Darkspawn. Twisted deformities mindlessly focused on reproducing their numbers. The Darkspawn taint the ground beneath their feet, turning the lush surface world to dust by call of the Archdemon, they inflict an unfathomable amount of destruction and death. Take heart, though, because like any story worth telling, evil has those who would oppose it. 
There exist self-sacrificing heroes who endeavor to stop the Darkspawn from infecting others. You see, if not for the Grey Wardens, the flame of life would have been extinguished on Thedas long ago. To stay alive in this world, the sword and bow are close companions. Battle is a way of life. Masters of it hold the most power. Even the tongue and quill are weapons. But magic? Not every nation shares the same view on the practice of the arcane arts. Some celebrate magic and hold it as the defining factor of those in power and politics. Other nations believe that magic must serve man and suppress magic for the safety and security of non-magical users. And in extreme cases, societies bind and chain magic only for use as weapons of war. For many, magic is taboo. It draws those who use it closer to the Fade, the metaphysical realm where spirits and demons dwell. Wars have been won and lost over its use, and the more Thedas is pulled into chaos, the closer the Fade gets to being pulled into reality. These tears in the veil? Well, they are a story for another day. For now, know this. The land lies rich in stories and history. As Thedas has persevered ages through constant strife, its tales have also persevered. Join us as we travel the land and visit its inhabitants, nations, religions and cultures. See the wondrous land of Thedas through its people's eyes and discover for yourself the, the Dragon, Dragon Age. Age.